me know whether or not the audio is working. If somebody can just put a comment and say, yeah, we can hear you, that would be um, totally awesome. Right, so. Can you hear me? Somebody comment and tell me if you can hear me. Can you hear me or not? Should be working. <laughs> yep, awesome, thanks Sam. Sam's confirmed that you can hear me. So, um, guys that uh, have just joined, we've got about a minute left until 1.30, which is when I said this thing was gonna go off. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll just, we'll just wait for a few more people to join. If you're at home, um, you, can, you need either a towel or even a t-shirt, it doesn't really matter, or something with a broom handle, like I've got a mop here, but you can use a broom handle, mop handle, anything like that. Um, yeah, just give people a couple more minutes uh, to see if anyone else joins the party. And guys, if you're thinking about watching this, and just like seeing what I say and seeing what I do, like I would encourage you, get up off the sofa, uh, get up out of your chair and like do this workout with me right now. Um, it gets it done, it gets it out of the way and it's a bit more interactive. I'll be like cueing you guys through the workout as well and most people uh, won't remember all the cues. Whereas if you're in the middle of doing something and I'm talking about a cue, you will get a little bit more of that sort of live interaction that you normally get at the gym. Um, I'm just gonna see how many more people are on. Sweet, we're up to 12 now. Amazing. So it's 1.30, so we're gonna get started. Um, first thing, I said I was always gonna uh, start these with uh, a positive message, and um, I'm gonna continue that theme. So today, it's a little bit of the same thing. I'm super excited about how this exercise specifically, trying to coach you guys um, while you're at home and not here with me, without any equipment, how excited I am about this um, sort of exercise and, and how much it brings to, uh, yeah, has helping me develop as a coach. So over the years, I've attended tons and tons of, uh, of seminars, lots of which delivered some, some really great content to me. And one of the things uh, I'm really excited about is sort of sharing all of that stuff, that knowledge with you. Maybe it's a little bit outside the realm of what you'd consider a normal CrossFit wad. Things like, um, you know, things like controlled articular rotations of your joints. Um, this is a cool concept I learned um, on a seminar, and I'm not gonna go through it right now, but there'll be a separate video, and I'm gonna teach you this concept because it requires no equipment, and it's a really good way to get a lot of tension in your body and improve your mobility. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I hope, uh, I hope you guys are excited. I have had a few messages from people saying, oh, uh, I'm feeling a bit unwell and they think they've, uh, they think they've got the virus. Um, but they've also said, oh, they're not feeling that unwell, they've got the symptoms, but um, yeah, they're, they're sort of starting to bounce back already. So that's good news as well. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna begin this workout. And again, as I said at the beginning, if you, are thinking about just sitting and watching me do it, then get up off the sofa. If you don't want to get your clothes sweaty, take your clothes off and get ready because we're going to do, uh, do this workout right now. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do a three round warm up and the first movement is called a sit through. So you're going to be on all fours with your knees off the ground like this. Yeah, I'm gonna take my left hand off the ground and I'm gonna shoot my right leg through. So I'm sitting through the gap. Back to the start position, sit through the other way. That's two. So we always come back to the start position, take a hand off the ground, shoot our opposite leg through the gap and come back to the start, that's four. Five. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. Next movement, air squat. What do we talk about with our air squat? Keep your spine nice and long, hold yourself well. Yeah, if you wanna help work on your front squat, which is what I'm working on at the moment, I'm gonna retract my shoulder blades, imagine my bar, keep my torso as upright as possible, and keep a nice long spine. We're gonna do 10. Awesome. The next one is an exercise you might recognize. It's a yoga press up, but we're gonna add a little twist. So we're gonna start in this straddle position, straddle top support, and we're gonna take our left hand and reach back like this towards our right foot. Grab that ankle and stretch. Back to stop support, right hand reaches through towards the left ankle and we stretch. Back into straddle top support, one press up and then stretching the other way again. Always reaching your hands across and back into the press up. We're gonna do six reps like this. Reach across and stretch. Reach across the other way and stretch. One press up, that's three. Reach and stretch. Reach and stretch. One press up. As you reach and stretch, you're doing all the same things you do in a downward dog. So pulling your hips into the air, your heels to the ground, and stretching the distance between your wrists and your hips out as much as possible. Try and think about all those cues as you do that. Two more. Hips high, heels low, long torso. One more. Nice job. The last thing we're going to do is a calf raise. And the first set of calf raises you're going to put your toes and your heels together. And as you lift up, I want you to make sure you're keeping the big toe pressure on. So if I do this, you can see my feet are rolling outwards. I want to try and keep my ankles together and my big toe pressure on. I also want my knees to stay locked. 30 reps in total. Control on the way down. Don't let your heels thump back to the ground. Last 10. Keep the knees lo locked. Keep the big toe pressure on. Nine and 30. Nice job. So for those of you just joining, we've only done one, more, uh, one round. So there's still time to just get involved right now. I've got two more rounds of a warm up. So. We start in this position and we sit through. Quadruped like this, take one hand off the ground, shoot the opposite foot and hit through the gap. 10 reps. Hand that stays on the ground, you have a nice active shoulder. Hips high. Nice job. Back into your air squat. 10 reps again. I'm working on my front squat position. Shoulders retracted. Shoulders down away from your ears. Nice long upright torso. So, 
forward. Yoga press up with alternating reach again. So I've got my feet wide as I push back. Hips high in the air, heels to the ground, lengthen from your wrist to your hips. Opposite side, dive into a press up. That's one. Stretch. Stretch. Dive into a press up. That's two. job. We're on to another set of calf raises. This time we still want to focus on big toe pressure but we're going to turn our feet out to the side and do 30 reps again. So guys this isn't just mindless calf raises because you're at home. The, the thinking behind doing the calf raises in this warm-up is we're going to be working on pistols today and by stimulating your kind of calf and your Achilles tendon and your feet. We're really prepping them sort of mobility wise for your ankles to have the most flexibility possible when we start to do the pistols in the next piece. No idea how many I've done now, but I'm gonna say 15, 15 more. That's 20, 10 to go. Lowering down under control. Knees locked. No thumping your heels to the ground. Three, two, one. That's 30. Solid. So I'm just going to walk to the camera to double check everyone's, uh, like nobody said these sounds stopped working or anything. Awesome. Seven of you still with me doing the session, I hope. Right, next one, we're gonna go back to sit through. So, knees close to the ground, shoot through. Yeah, in this quadruped, right hand off, left foot through. Yeah, I kind of face my chest and eyes this way. I face my chest and eyes that way. I keep my shoulder active. job back into the air squat if you're working on the front squat if I've ever come around and cued you retract your scaps in the rack position now's the time to work on it with an imaginary bar 10 reps Yoga press up with alternating reach. It's going to change the angle a little bit for you. Wide feet. So I'm going to reach back. Hips to the sky, heels to the ground. Stretch your body and your arm out long. Dive into the press up. set of calf raises probably the hardest one just toes turned in slightly so it's really hard to keep your knees locked in this position but it's a good exercise toes turned in angles ankles slightly apart 30 internally rotated calf raises big toe pressure on six as I was explaining before calf raises 
especially where you control the eccentric phase, a really good way of developing your ankle mobility. Especially if you do them barefoot like I am. Last ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Nice job. Really good. So I'll just let people sort of catch their breath maybe. Um, catch up if you or a few reps behind or something. So what we're going to go into now, we're going to do three rounds of five to ten pike press-ups. So a pike press-up looks like this. So I'm in my sort of front support position. I want to start back here with my shoulders further back this way. Yeah. If I'm starting here, I'm in the wrong position. Yeah. I start back here. My hips are high in the air. One way of scaling this movement is of us going into a straddle. It's a little bit easier like that. I'm going to take this kind of feet together position though. So what I'm doing, I look forward and I'm aiming to touch my nose to the floor about a foot in front of my fingers. Yeah, and I initiate the movement by bending my arms, my elbows, yeah, and heading straight for that spot. I'm not coming up and over. I'm literally eyes up, I bend my elbows, I keep my elbows tucked in. And I move forward and back on that trajectory. Yeah, we're gonna do five to 10 reps. Again, as I said, straddles are easier. Really important to get far forward. And push straight back to where you started, not upwards. Cool. So, next piece. You're going to either use your uh, mop or stick if you've got one, like this. And it's called a shoulder extension. You're just literally pulling up as far as you can. So you take a grip that's about this wide, they're just wider than your hips, and you keep your elbows locked, and your chest up, and you lift back, yeah? If you haven't got the stick, and you've instead got a t-shirt or a towel, it's the same thing, yeah? We're in this position, I'm trying to pull, I'm trying to lift my hands to the sky, without arching my spine. I'm going to spend 30 seconds here. That's 10. Twenty done. Nice job. I'll have a little rest there. I said 60 seconds between rounds. I'm just going to find the remote control. So I'm still with you. Just finding the remote control so I can make sure the rest periods are right. Right. So. Right. I've been walking around, so we'll call that a minute for the first rest period. So we're back in to another five to ten pike press ups. Again, start back here and not forwards. Yeah, I'm making my elbows, what well, I'm going to do it from this angle now. I don't want my elbows to flare out, I want my elbows to stay here so they're externally rotated and tucked in by my sides. Yeah, so it should look like this. I'm aiming nose to the ground, it's going straight to the ground are in front of my hands. (laughs) 
So if you're really struggling with the plate press up, it is quite an advanced move. It's two options. If you can go down with control, but can't press up, you just put your knees down, find the top position again. If you can't go down with control, then just go to a kneeling press up. Yeah, same thing, five to 10 reps, okay? So again, you're picking up our stick or our t-shirt or our towel, and we're gonna do 30 second active shoulder extension. So I'm actively pulling up on the stick with straight arms, trying not to round my back at all. 10 seconds. Twenty seconds. Make sure your elbows stay locked. Thirty seconds. Nice job. We're having a minute rest in between these rounds. Solid guys. I hope you're still with me. There is going to be a bit of intensity at the end where we'll get sweaty, but it's important to give yourself enough rest in between these sections. Um, the pike press up, just because you're in the rest, I'll just tell you the pike press up is my absolute favorite move for strict um, handstand press up strength. Uh, if you want strict handstand press ups, or if you want more strict handstand press ups, I think it is the, the ultimate um, kind of volume strength developer. Like build up so you can do three sets of 10 and you'll be very close to doing at least a couple of strict handstand push ups. Um, right. Last round, here we go, pike press up again, or a regular press up or kneeling press up if you're not get on, getting on with this movement. Hips in the air, dive straight forward. Push straight back to the start, not straight up. towel. Just give you guys a few seconds to finish your hands now at your press up set. So again, my palms are facing forwards. Yeah, so you can see the back of my hands now. And I'm just lifting back, lifting up as much as I can without kind of like doing this type of thing. I want to keep my torso straight upright and lift. 30 seconds. Ten to go. Nice, really good. So, that's our first little three round section done. Now, the second section I'm actually gonna turn the camera around for. Um, we're now gonna do uh, pistols and reverse planche lean. So, the reason I'm going to turn the camera around now is so you can see uh, the sofa. That is important. I think everyone's got a sofa at home. So, um, yeah, this is what's happening. So, so this is really interesting. And uh, I've actually got a little bit of a dodgy left knee at the moment. And as I rehab that, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'll be trying to do the full reps on my right leg, and I'll be doing a scaled version on my left leg, so it works perfectly, you guys will get to see both. So, uh, yeah, so pistol. This is, these are the versions, let's go through it first. So first version, or the most difficult version, I'm not great at these, so let's see how we go. Yeah, that's it, we want full depth. Front foot's off the ground, leg straight, and punch back up, yeah? If you're doing five reps on the bounce, yeah. If 
you haven't got this yet, a couple of things you can try. First thing is to grab your foot with one or both hands. I'm gonna start with just one hand. Yeah, as soon as I grab my foot, it's just a bit easier for me to control. It kind of pulls your body weight forward, yeah? Second thing you can try, counterbalance. So it doesn't have to be anything too heavy, yeah? Even a water bottle. It seems like you're adding weight, it's gonna make it harder. Actually makes it easier, yeah? So as soon as I hold that water bottle in front of me, whoop, fall over backwards, not quite. Maybe I need a bigger water bottle. You guys get the picture. I'm really reaching that bottle forwards. Now all of a sudden I can do a pistol, yeah? Um, counterbalance. Third option. This is still, you're still doing the full reps. You can do just the eccentric, like this. So let's say I get down there, boom, I sit down, I stand back up. You still get a lot of strength out of that from controlling on the way down. Next thing, you use the sofa. So I come over to the sofa. I'm going to go side on so you can see what's going on. I've got one leg sticking out in front. And I just sit my hips down onto the sofa and stand back up on one leg. Yeah? Yeah? If this is still too difficult for you, just like this. So we go down on one leg, both legs on the way back up. Yeah? Down, using one leg, both legs on the way back up. So you've got a bunch of options for doing five pistols on each leg. Um, the second movement is called a reverse planche lean. So what we're doing now, I'm turning my hands out to the side like this. I'm coming up into the table hold and then I'm leaning as far back as I can so that the angle from my arms is coming is like that. So I'm here and I just lean back like this. So I'm sort of pushing my hand into the ground at that angle. You want to get your hips as high as possible and see how far I can move my shoulders back this way. Okay. So those are our two movements. Um, I'm gonna get started now. So five pistols on each leg. So, here we go. Balance, but I'm trying not to put my other leg down until it's time to work it. I'm really trying to get as deep as I can. Oh, fall over on the last rep. That's okay. Opposite side now. So for me, the opposite side is super tough. So I'm going to use the sofa so I don't make the injury to my knee worse. Again, I'm just going to, boom, I'm going to use my leg on the, my opposite leg on the way back up. So I'm doing the eccentric and the eccentric will really, it's actually a really good thing to do if you've got the injury I've got, which is just like tendinopathy in my patella tendon. The protocol, the advice is actually to do just eccentrics. So if you do just the eccentric, you help the tendon heal. Last one. Five. Nice job. So when you do the reverse planche lean, you should really feel it here in the top of your triceps. So again, fingers pointing out to the side, hips high and lean, hold for 30 seconds. If you can't get much lean, that's fine. 10, just get your hips as high as you can. Work on that shoulder extension. 
20. Thirty, nice job. Right, pistol again, and again. I'm going a lot deeper than like the range of motion that CrossFit requires. Um, but on a pistol, I don't see any reason not to to train this really big range of motion. to support like me I nearly fall over backwards I really have to reach forward if I want to be able to get back up nice and then as I said demonstrating the scaled version so I'm with the uh, with the sofa version you can like put a pillow or let's say let's see if I can take away the cushion and still have control I've taken away the cushion now so I've increased my range of motion yeah I'm still pain free but I'm using both legs on the way up so I'm getting an eccentric Pistols are an awesome skill. I think it's one of the things that a lot of people in the gym don't have yet. I'd really like to see people come back from this, uh, this like temporary closure of the gym with, uh, with their pistol. So now we're gonna go hips high in the air, lean, active, pushing hard into the ground with your hands, keeping your hips high, 30 seconds to do here. Then to go. Keep leaning. Nice. All right, let's take a little rest. I think I said a minute between rounds, but I think I got a little bit carried away and didn't give you guys that rest. So we'll take a little minute in between rounds. I hope you guys are still with me. I hope you guys are still going. Um, I'll just take this time in between rounds. If you are at home and you're doing these sessions, please take some video of yourself uh, and send it to me. My phone number is on the website. I'm on WhatsApp. Send me a WhatsApp video and I will coach you. Um, I, will like, it, it, I can do so much with a video. If you send me a video of you doing a pistol progression, I can straight away see what stretch maybe you can do to improve it. Is it the right progression or do you need to move up or down? You know, or are there, are there any coaching cues I can give you to help you like, be better with your pistols? Um, please, please record yourself. Even if it's not something I've programmed in the daily home workout, let's say, I don't know, you've got a pull-up bar at home or a barbell or um, I don't know, something. Just uh, yeah, take a video of whatever you're doing, WhatsApp it to me and I will get back to you with feedback and once I see what kit you've got as well, I say, oh, that's cool, you can do this. You've done this exercise, uh, you get some programming suggestions as well. And here we go, guys, last round. Five pistols on your right leg. that I would consider a technical error. I was a little bit off balance. That happens a little bit when you get tired. Oh, foot just touched the ground. Another little error. I remember I'm doing the scale version. Eccentric. So if you're doing this on your sofa and you're using the eccentric, don't thump onto your sofa cushions. I want to imagine it's a very fragile sofa. Yeah, you have to be very gentle as you just rest your weight on it a tiny bit at the bottom. 
you bring that other foot in. Nice job. A last set of planche lean, guys, or reverse planche lean. So start in a strong table hold and then shift your body weight this way. Away from your feet. Active, be pushing into the ground the whole time. That's 10. That's 20. It's fucking hard. Keep the hips up. Active shoulders. Oh. Savage. If it's the first time you've done it, you might not get as much of it. It might not be as hard for you as it is for me. But as you do it a bit more, you can lean more. Incredible for your shoulder extension mobility. Um, yeah, think about why do I want shoulder extension mobility? Well, if you want to do a strict muscle up, you want shoulder extension mobility. This is shoulder extension. Yeah. Um, if you've got great shoulder extension mobility and you can do a few pull ups, you'll be able to do a strict muscle up. Right, so guys, I'll explain the uh, movements for the last piece now. Uh, so, AMRAP in 10 minutes, um, 20 second hollow hold or rock. So here are the options. You can do a bent hollow hold. This would be like the sort of easiest option. You're only going for 20 seconds. If you feel like you can do a bent hollow body rock, you can get some movement, now that would be great, yeah? Other options, you can do a long hollow body hold, or you can do a long hollow body rock. Especially if you're doing the, uh, the rock, try and stay super tight, no flexion and extension of the body. It just stays as one piece and moves, yeah? Second one is an arch hold. So you're making your body as long as possible, and then lifting your chest and thighs. And if that's too easy, I'm trying to rock. I think my rock probably isn't that solid on the arch position. I'm going to work on it. Um, but again, you're trying to stay as one piece and not sort of arch up like we have sometimes in classes. Last piece of the workout. Sofa split squat. One foot goes on the sofa and your back knee touches the ground on each rep. I'm trying to keep my torso nice and upright. And just kiss my knee to the ground. I'll do 10 on one side and 10 on the other side. I'm just gonna make sure you guys aren't too far away. Who have we got still with us? Nice. Right, there we go. I'm just fixing the camera. Hello, Marco Ranzi in Italy. I hope you're okay, mate. It's been a long time. Um, hi, Jackie Harrigan. I hope you and Phil are well. It's great to see you guys watching. So, if you think this progression is too easy for you. Again, this is stuff everyone has at home. You got a couple of big books, put the big books on the ground, stand the working foot on the big books, and then the same range of motion applies, yeah? Like that one, I was a little bit too close. So you have to find the sweet spot. Yeah, I'm still trying to keep my torso upright. Yeah? kissing my back knee to the floor. Now, as you can see, if I go on a side angle, my, well, my range of motion is greater, okay? Cool? So now I've explained the, uh, the movement. I will start, to start the clock and we're gonna get going. I'm gonna do the workout with you. As I said, guys, if you've stayed with us this long but you haven't done the workout today, tomorrow, get stuck in, do the workout with me while I'm doing it. Um, Leave me a comment. 
because uh, I can't look at them while I'm training. So we're going to do 10 minutes. I'll just remind you what it is again. It's 20 second hollow body hold or rock, 20 second arch body hold or rock, and then 10 reps on each leg of a sofa split squat. Right, I'm sticking my 10 minute timer on. This is solid. The other thing, I know timers can be an issue at home, so we'll try and make the workouts friendly so that you don't have to um, worry about that. If you follow along, you'll just be able to follow with my timer. Two, one, go. That's 10 seconds. That's 20 seconds. Onto your tummy. Arch rock. Make sure your knees are locked. Solid. And then 10 reps on each leg of a sofa split squat. One thing that can help on here, clenching your fist. You can see I'm taking my foot off the sofa at the top. That makes it a bit more challenging as you're sort of balancing on one leg. Clench your fist to create some tension if you need to. Solid. Switch legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure the big toe pressure stays on. Seven. Nice long spine. Ten. And if you start with a hollow body rock or an arch body rock, but need eventually to go to a hold, that's fine as well. This probably isn't the kind of workout that I would do balls to the wall. I would focus on the quality of my movement. standard is complete control and balance at the top of every rep. Big toe pressure even as you come out of the hole. And remember you can use more books than I'm using if you want to use more range of motion in your hip or less books that I'm using you want a little bit less range of motion. Last one. Solid. Switch over. It's another awesome exercise. If you've got one leg slightly stronger than the other, then back squats is always going to be something that you plateau on. Front squats, you're going to plateau on because it's a bilateral movement. Whereas this, we're working both legs, getting both glutes fired up. And again, take a little second. Remember, if it's getting too hard, bent hollow hold. That's where you're at. That's fine. Or bent hollow body rock. 
or the long hold or rock, it's up to you. The arch is definitely the hardest for me. No idea what my arch looks like now. So sorry if it's atrocious. My sister Deb was shooting a home workout at my parents' house when I was there this morning. And for wit, and yeah, she was running into the same problem I'm running into now, which is control your breathing try to continue to give coaching cues to people that are listening as you do the workout. Losing my big toe pressure. So keep that on, keep it controlled. I've been speaking to the other CM2 coaches over the course of the morning. We've got lots of ideas for how we're going to help you guys, programs we're going to design and offer. Um, Katie's going to be sending you guys some extra little mini core video sessions via Facebook Live. Tom's going to be coming in with me, I think on Sunday. We're going to do a... Uh, mobility piece for you guys for those that will be missing Tom's mobility sessions yeah we've got lots of stuff coming your way your development is not on pause we're just closing the gym temporarily You can do a hold if you need to. Hold is good as well. If you're just learning the movement, especially if you're trying to do the rock, start tiny. Two minutes to go, guys. Keep working. talked about this earlier but if you're doing these sessions or if you're doing other training at home on your own with kit you've got my phone number is on the contacts form of crossfitcm2.com or the contacts page find my phone number send me a whatsapp video of you training all cm2 members I'll be able to tell you whether or not you're on the right progression. I'll be able to give you some coaching cues. I might even be able to give you some programming ideas based on whatever kit you've, you've got at home. Last round it's going to be, we've got under a minute to go. So remember you can hold, or you can rock tiny, tiny rocks to start with. As you feel more confident with it, 
A bit bigger rocks. Five more seconds. Last 20 seconds. I'm in the, the arch position for this one. I'm just gonna hold it because I have a feeling I'm not staying very rigid in my arch rocks. Nice guys, that is time. So, just stay with me if you've been doing the workout. I'll give you guys a little minute to catch your breath. I'll give myself a little minute to catch my breath. And then uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little cool down. Just loosen those legs off. Uh, loosen your core off before we go. I'm just gonna turn the phone around so we can see. If, I, if you commented and I missed it, I will look at it after. Uh, Gemma Lee is watching. Jason Gibbons is watching. All right, guys. Adam French. French, oh, it's been a while. What's going on, man? Thanks for tuning in, Jason. Thanks for tuning in, Gemma. All right, this is what we're going to do for our cool down, guys. We're just going to have hands behind you like this. Feet wider than shoulder width. And we're going to rock our knees from one side to the other. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Thanks as well if you left a comment. Um, as I explained this morning, we'll be posting these on the CM2 group. It'll be live on the CM2 members Facebook group. But I'll also be each morning posting a PDF document with the workout in it. And we're gonna link as many demo videos as we can um, so that if you wanna do the workout at 6 a.m. every day, you've got the demo videos. Um, the other thing, I think there's a few ways of getting your phone to cast onto your TV. There's an app, I'll post it in the group. There's an app uh, where you can get Facebook onto your TV or if you've got Chromecast, it's obviously hooked up already, but you can cast it onto your TV so you don't have to watch this thing on your phone. The next one, we should go into a cobra stretch, like this, eyes to the sky. And I like with this one just to sort of like look over my right shoulder, look to the sky above me, look over my left shoulder. Deep breaths, shoulders down away from your ears, dropping those hips to the mat. Nice job. Then we're just going to finish off back here, hands behind you, forehead on the floor. Just nice deep breaths into your tummy in the child's pose. Right, thanks for tuning in today, guys. Um, Matt Smith, thanks for your comment. Glad you enjoyed it, mate. Um, if you guys have got any questions, want to send me videos, please do it. Please engage with me. Um, want to go, I want to be coaching you guys while you're away from the gym. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything, please give me a shout. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Over and out, team.